Welcome to the first flight here with me on the FS Derek channel and welcome also to Manson Airport the code for which is uh, Echo Golf Mike Hotel if you want to find it it's the third longest runway in the UK it's hardly ever used unlike Heathrow and Gatwick um, this was built in the Second World War for bombers to land particularly ones that were shot up and needed to land as soon as they got back into um, English airspace and so uh, a runway was built right on the tip of the southeastern peninsula of the country uh, as a sort of a rescue air base so it was in use quite recently by the RAF um, but uh, it's now a commercial airport um, has changed hands recently been the base for some jet flights to Europe but um, nobody's ever really operated successfully out of here um, it's where I learned to fly and uh, what I'm going to do is just take you round in the circuit really on the first lesson that's about all you ever do on the first lesson and um, perhaps point out a few landmarks and uh, we'll get to learn the plane now I know the first thing everyone wants to do with the flight simulator is jump into a jumbo jet but in fact uh, that's very atypical the first plane you'll normally fly will be something like a Cessna 152 um, this even this plane the Cessna 172 is pretty large for a training plane but uh, it's I want to stick as far as I can with the standard aircraft that come with the uh, FSX basic FSX and again the first thing you do with the plane really is not fly it you uh, walk around so we're gonna have a little walk around and just to uh, let you know the sort of things that you would check. Checking the plane is always reassuring both to yourself and to the pilots, uh, the, the passengers that fly with you. Um, you're checking things like the pitot. This is the pitot um, here. This is uh, measures the uh, what they call the ram air pressure or the pressure caused by the plane flying forwards. Um, and there are various other holes in the aircraft. You need to check that bees haven't started making nests inside. You're checking things like um, fuel you're checking for water in the fuel, you're checking for oil uh, levels and things like that propeller is nice and clean and it's not dinked um, and uh, things like lights and uh, tires making sure the tires aren't moving around the hubs uh, something that's called tire creep and um, just other things you know like is the plane sitting level on the ground you know is one wing higher than the other if <laughs> if it is why is it because the undercarriage is about to collapse on the right hand side or is it because whoever loaded the fuel in loaded all the fuel into one wing which is going to be a bit of a problem when taking off or um, or um, did the last person who fly it uh, just use use up all the fuel in one wing and uh, without balancing it which again would be a problem so having done the walk around we're going to um, step inside the plane now I've got a virtual cockpit going here but um, I'm not going to use a track IR because I think that's a little bit disconcerting because I'll be moving my head around and you'll be trying to keep up with what I'm looking at and you'll get seasickness so um, let's just uh, go to the electrical panel I'm pressing shift A to go back twice to the electrical panel and there are two things that a plane engine needs to work and it's, it's essentially it's a very simple um, mechanism of plane and one's electricity and the other one is fuel now uh, unlike a car where it's worked on the ignition the ignition really on a plane is a is a secondary system it is important but really as I say all uh, a plane needs is some form of electricity and some fuel so what we're going to do we're going to put the master switch on which will connect uh, the battery to the starter motor and press a a couple of times go back and we'll put the fuel in because and, and you will always find that pulled out because that's how the last pilot stopped the plane was to, to pull the mixture lean and we're going to just do a little quick check around of the area and make sure I'm not going to kill anyone with a propeller or blast anyone away who happens to be behind us and also check that we've got the brakes covered and then go to the um, the ignition switch the magnetos and pull them both across to start and now we've got, uh, there we are, so we've got the plane working nicely there and press shift A a couple of times to go back to the electrics we can put the beacon on to show everyone, actually we probably should have put that on when we put the electrics on to show everyone we've started up and then we'll put the um, 
landing, taxi in, and have lights on, and the strobe. Well, I'd probably the strobe bit, but not at the moment. The other thing we want to do, obviously, is energise the plane. So now we've got the uh, engine started, it's supplying electricity. So now it's supplying electricity to the plane, and we turn on the alternator so that the alternator, which is a mechanically driven uh, electricity generating um, uh, motor, is now starting to supply electricity, which means that the battery will then will now recharge. So we've started up. We uh, would probably do a uh, call to the tower now just to tell them that we've got the latest uh, weather information and that we are uh, requesting a radio check and they will come back with radio check 5 which is on a scale of 1 to 5 and we're going to ease the throttle back so we, we ask for um, departure instructions and they're going to tell us to do something like taxi to runway 28. Now just using the um, rudder here and checking that we're clear we're going to start to taxi towards runway 28. Now you'll find that most airports in the UK have a runway, at least one runway, which is aligned to the southwest, and that's because the prevailing winds in the UK are to the southwest. And in the case of Manson, it's uh, two eight and uh, ten one zero. quite a way away from the apron here, it's not typically where we would start up, so we've got a little bit of a taxi to um, get to the runway. Now we're approaching the uh, runway 2810, but we're not actually um, at the end of it, and that's because this runway is extremely long, from memory I think it's over a kilometre long. And an, an aircraft of this sort of um, type is more than capable of um, taking off from the middle of the runway. Um, and so that's just one little tip that you don't see much in FS videos, is that they're not going to insist that you go down the end of the runway. Really, you're the pilot. It's up to you to decide where you want to take off. I wouldn't suggest trying to take off across the runway. Uh, even or, or from a taxiway, although on this airfield air you almost certainly could. But, um, you know, we're at uh, holding point Delta, uh, so you can see that Alpha Bravo and Charlie are right the way up there. Now, it was going to take me half an hour to taxi all the way up there, so I'm not going to bother. So I'm going to call, for, I'm going to tell them I'm ready for departure from here. Now, there's one thing that you um, always do do in a light aircraft, and that is you do your um, pre departure checks. and you're going to rev the engine and if you rev the engine you're not you're going to want to do it into wind because um, aerodynamically that's the best um, way to to do it in a, in a small aircraft so I'm facing into the wind assuming it's a southwesterly wind which um, it's a little bit difficult to tell from that windsock over there and the checks that you do really are checks to make sure that the plane is flying on the ground and I know that sounds a bit odd but if there's anything wrong with the plane's ability to fly then you need to find out about it on the ground so let's um, before we do that and while I um, remember let's just press shift A and go back and, and turn the straight board for example and we'll also turn the fuel pump on um, which is uh, advisable on, on takeoff and landing just helps increase the fuel pressure um, usually you turn it on takeoff landing and when you're switching tanks fuel tanks and now with my feet firmly on the brakes what I'm going to do is I'm going to increase the throttle and I'm going to keep half an eye outside and make sure that we don't start taking off I think that's about as much as I can do uh, holding it on the brakes and we're just making sure that everything's fine so we're looking at uh, uh, temperatures we're looking at fuel flows we're looking at uh, oil temperatures and pressures and things like that and the vacuum uh, which is the suction and the uh, amps, which is how much is coming off the alternator. So, in other words, the electrical system looks fine. So that all looks fine. We're going to check the two ignition systems by um, going from both onto left, and there's no discernible drop there. So that would mean that the um, left system on itself is is just as good as both. So we'll go back to both, 
there's no real change. Go to the right system, and again, that means the right system is as good as both, so we'll go back to both. So both ignition systems are working. Now lastly, uh, what I'm going to do is just uh, throttle right back. And that's because, again, if I throttle back in the air, I don't want the plane to stall. Um, and uh, stall in the air would be quite serious. So we just check on the ground that it's not, if we do throttle back, it's not going to stall. And that's fine. So, full left rudder, and back round onto the line, and call um, the air traffic control. Tell them we're ready for departure. You don't say ready for takeoff, because takeoff is as a reserved... Uh, phrase which is um, intended really to be used only for planes which are, are literally taking off. We're not taking off at the moment, we're just ready for departure. So we call ready for departure and they all tell us to line up 2A or take off uh, our discretion 2A. We're going to need some flaps, so it's a little bit hidden down here, but we'll just give ourselves 10 degrees of flap and turn left on the runway. So there's not an awful lot left, but there's enough there. So, with 10 degrees of flaps, we're going to... Um, now, the, the aircraft itself is going to pull to one side, and so what you can do is you can, here's another tip, just angle the plane to one side on the runway, so that when you start off, what's going to happen is that plane is going to tend to pull itself around to the left, and that's exactly what you want it to do. So instead of having to fight it, you actually can get, get it to help you. And up it comes to speed, so 40, 60, 70, we're going to want to sort of climb out. You see there it sort of decides for itself when it's going to take off, the best thing to do is not, not to fight it. Keep the nose down to build up a little bit of speed, because you don't want a, a stall at this point, and then start to climb, while always keeping it in the wide band. Now the altimeter, which was here, was showing about 200 feet on the ground, and that which is about right for Manston. So, uh, and the circuit height is 1,000 feet above ground level, so we're going to be flying at about 1,200 feet above, above ground level. And we're climbing, now, we're th over 300 feet above ground, so now what I'll do is I'll um, feed the flaps up. Now we can come out of this white, white arc, which is the flap operating arc, but we don't really want to come too far out of it because the most efficient speed for most planes to climb is actually at the top of the white arc. So whether you're flying a, uh, a small plane like this Cessna 172 or a twin or, or even a big jet uh, and you're not sure about the speeds, which uh, you know, if you're flying a, a different aircraft it probably won't be, uh, you can always just climb at the top of the white arc and you're now we're coming up to 1200 feet now, so I'm going to start to turn left. And the sort of turn you want is about 20 to 30 degrees, that's in between the second and the third mark again. And we're at 1200 feet, so I'm going to level up and I'm going to throttle back as well because I don't really want to do this um, too fast. Now I didn't check the compass, so I'm just going to press D to align the compass. And that's, we're pretty well aligned now. Up a bit. And uh, you can see here that 280, which was the uh, alignment of the runway, is now under the, the right-hand red marker, or the, um, the sort of marker at 3 o'clock here. And that mean, that's exactly, uh, it's a quick way of working out uh, which direction you need to fly. If you're good at subtracting 90 from 280, um, then that's fine, you can get 190 off of that straight away. And then you need to subtract another 90 <laughs> to get 100, etc. Or you can just use the, the dots. So that's, we've just finished what we call the base leg there. There are, there are three legs basically, base, downwind, um, uh, sorry, we've just finished the crosswind leg. So that's the, the crosswind leg is the one, the first one. Then there's the downwind leg when you're going with the wind uh, down the runway. And then the one which you turn towards the runway just prior to landing is called the base leg. And so um, there we are. So now we've got 280, the runway under the, the bottom one. And if we look to the left here, 
we'll see the wrong way and we should be flying parallel to it and we're flying at uh, we're just a little bit low there so I'll increase that now. now I haven't done anything about navigation we can go over that um, you know as we um, fly a bit more together The downwind leg is obviously the longest one. You can see, look at the length of the runway there, so we're not going to have any trouble landing. And the downwind leg, uh, you uh, usually make a further radio call saying that you're um, landing. So we'd say something like uh, Manston Golf uh, Foxtrot Mike uh, request landing. Now, there's been quite a light aircraft and obviously quite slow. There's a lot of latitude in how you can fly the circuit. It's nice to fly a disciplined circuit, but you don't want to beat yourself up if you don't fly it too brilliantly. What I'm doing is I'm doing my best to stay around 1,200 feet and stay around 100 degrees, but um, you're not going to get uh, hauled up in front of air traffic control if you don't do it. In fact, uh, where I am in the southeast of England, there's outside the uh, Manston, there's very little air traffic control, so we have a lot of uh, latitude. So we're tooling along at 90 knots, and uh, now we could quite easily turn left and land from here, but I'm going to give us a little bit longer to set it up. Now what you can see down there is Margate. This is actually the v VFR scenery. I think it is. Oh, it might not be. If it isn't, then I'll definitely make sure we have the VFR scenery on next time. In Margate, there's a nice uh, block of flats which you can line up on. I'm going to descend gently, so because we're descending, we're going to get energy from the descent, so we don't need so much energy from the engine. And we've got to the point where we've got 280 under the left hand uh, marker now and we're descending nicely now the key to um, control of speed in the approach is first of all not to stall because you, want, you only do it once and then you die so you never ever stall um, we want to keep it around about uh, 60 to 80 in this plane and the quickest way if you are going slow is to put the nose down the quickest way to get speed is to put the nose down if you believe that as a result you're going to end up too low, then you add power. The quickest way to lose speed, conversely, is to raise the nose. And so you raise the nose, and if as a result of raising the nose and losing speed you think you're going to end up too high, then you reduce the throttle. There we are, so that's not bad. So we've flown four right angle turns there. Now in a small aircraft you don't really need to worry too much about those lights. They they show you what the three degree glide slope is and, and they're mainly for jets. Now we're not going to be coming in at three degrees, we're going to be coming in at much, much more than three degrees. You'll notice there's a, uh, an airplane on the runway there, but um, I'm sure air traffic control wouldn't have given us clearance to land if he didn't think that they were going to be well away. It's a jet, so we have to be a little bit concerned about jet wash. Let's um, stop, put some flaps down, so we're going to put 10 degrees worth of flap down. Jet wash is a dangerous condition where you get vortices of uh, swirling air left on the runway caused by the flow of air from the, um, from the high pressure area below the wing to the low pressure area above the wing and uh, it persists for up to four minutes. Stage of flaps. keyboard to set the flaps I was going to um, 
end up stopping the uh, screen recording software. So let's just float down. You can see how slowly we did that. That we were about 50 miles an hour when we touched down. That was a little bit slow. We haven't got much fuel on board and there's only one passenger. So we just about got away with that. But I would have been happier with doing that a little bit faster. So to avoid uh, flying in ground effect and to avoid taking off again, we're going to um, just bring the flaps on. beginner, for a beginner's first landing, that wasn't too bad. <laughs> However, we're going to get a lot better than that. Let's not taxi in too fast. So uh, what I'll do is I'll take the plane back and park it at the apron, which is outside the flying club, which is where it should be, and uh, hopefully it'll be there for uh, our next lesson. So um, hopefully um, you learn something, something about uh, uh, real flying how it really works and uh, next time we'll go up and uh, perhaps do a bit of sightseeing and something a little bit more um, advanced and I'll, um, I'll see you then.